Hello everyone, it's been a while since my last video so it's good to be back. In this video we're going to be talking about root hair cells and water uptake. And I'm going to talk about the content relevant for the IGCSE syllabus. But really it is applicable to most, but this is specifically aimed at those studying biology IGCSE. Now to start this video, what I want you to do is look at the right side of the screen. And it's the same image that I show my own students. So I've got a microscope image on the left and a sort of simple diagrammatic version of that on the right and the question asks which features have been labelled on the diagram to the right and can you identify them on the real microscope image on the left. So let's talk through what we've got let's highlight some things here. So we can see this first one here this where I just put a red asterisk that is labelling the epidermal cell. Epidermal means sort of outside so we're looking at an outer uh, sort of surface cell here. Now this I mean, as the title says, it's about root hair cells found on the outer surface of the roots in plants. So we're looking at an epidermal or an outer cell. Now, technically, a root hair is just an extension of that particular epidermal cell. So you can see this, if I just highlight in red here, this is the root hair cell on the real microscope image. And you can see this root hair just extending from the epidermal cell. That's what this root hair is. And on the diagram is this bit here that I'm labelling. We can see, if I just, for simplistic reasons, just put the first letter of the name. So we've got the epidermal cell there. We can see just where I label N, that's the nucleus. That's sort of the, the powerhouse of the cell, if you like. It controls all the metabolic reactions. It's where DNA is contained. And we've got here the vacuole you can see the large vacuole within the plant cell really indicative of a plant cell as opposed to an animal cell so we've got the epidermal cell which is the the entire thing the root hair extension we've got the vacuole present we've got the nucleus that we can see so it's very very simple features here we can identify to show that this is a root hair cell now if we were to zoom in on this red box that i had drawn on this top right what we'd get ultimately is something that looks like this at the bottom left. So what I've done is just in I have a diagram to enlarge that particular area and show you what we have. So what we've got here is the tip of a root. Now at the very tip of a root is the root cap. And you can see it's a protective layer of cells. So at the tip of the root, we've got the root cap. So we'll just make a few notes at the top. So we have the root cap at the root tip. Okay. Now the rest of the root we can see is covered by this layer of cells. Now that layer of cells is called the epidermis. So we're talking about this region here that I'm just highlighting red with a red asterisk, perhaps not overly clear, maybe just highlight that in black in fact. So they are our epidermal cells, the ones we identified up at the top here. Now root hairs are just long extended epidermal cells and they're found a little way up from the root tip. Now, root hairs are continually replaced as the root grows. So notice if I do it with a blue arrow, notice that these root hair cells are found slightly higher up from the root tip. So not immediately right to the base of the root, but a little bit higher. So they're long extended epidermal cells. So we'll just put that in as a note at the top as well. So these root hairs. are long extended epidermal cells. Okay, now what we're doing is really thinking about the role that these root hair cells have. Now the root hair cells increase the external surface area. Now they increase the external surface area for absorption of water by osmosis but also for mineral ions by active transport and they ultimately help to provide anchorage for the plant. So there's two 
key rolls of the root hair cell. So if we just make a note of this, so in terms of the key rolls, there's really two. One is to increase the external surface area of the root, as we said, for absorption of water, osmosis and mineral ions back to transport, but also to provide what's called anchorage for the whole plant. Having a deep, dense network of roots or root hairs will just help to hold that plant upright and steady. So when we think about water movement, because there are other videos that I've done on transpiration specifically, which is the subsequent movement, essentially, or if you think about the transpirational pull, it's the movement of water from this root hair all the way up through the xylem in the stem to the leaf and the subsequent loss of water. Now I do have got a specific video on transpiration as a topic, but we're just looking very generally in this video about where the water's going in terms of getting it from just root to leaf, just very simply just from root to leaf. So I also give my students this diagram to the right, far right of the screen, where we're looking at water moving up the plant. And we start ultimately with water in the soil. That is our starting point. So I'm just gonna write these in, water, in the soil and we mustn't forget that that's our starting point for the water so there's water in the soil and then we can see moves by osmosis so the next thing that the water really is going to come into contact with is the root hair cell Now, I've got a label on the right saying through adjacent cells. So if we now go back to my original picture of the root on the far left, if I just highlight something here in green, notice we have, so we've got the extension here, this root hair cell, let's label it here too. But we can see to get to the inner part of the root, the xylem, which is the vessel that's going to carry water, and we'll just identify that here with an arrow. So when we're talking about xylem, we're talking about this central portion here. Now, I, again, I do have another video showing how you can identify the difference between xylem and phloem. These green circles, if I highlight these in red, around, these green bits around them, they're the phloem cutting cross-section of the vascular bundle. But ultimately, to get from the green circle, if you like, to the black arrow, to go from the root hair cell on the outside into the xylem, we have to pass through these cells here, just where I'm drawing this black, darker line. Now, those are known as root cortex cells. So if we go back to the uh, flow chart on the right-hand side, once we go through adjacent cells, we're going to essentially go through the root cortex cells and then we move into what's called the vascular bundle so then we would be in the xylem or more specifically the xylem vessels in the stem through the transpiration pull we get taken ultimately to the what's called the mid midrib of the leaf and then from that midrib through veins and when we talk veins we're talking vascular bundle so we're talking about xylem, we then move to what are called the mesophyll cells. And we're talking ultimately spongy and palisade mesophyll tissue. That's where we're taking that water to be used for photosynthesis. So we have just a very quick video about root hair cells and water uptake. We've got the root cap, ultimately which is the very tip of a root. It's a protective layer of cells. The rest of the root we can see is covered by this layer of cells called the epidermis. A root has a long extended epidermal cells that find a little way up from the root and they're continued to replace as the root grows. Two main roles of the root has are to increase the external surface area. Again, it's important to say in an exam question for absorption of water by osmosis and for mineral ions by active transport, but also to provide anchorage for the plant. And then we've just looked at a little bit about water movement up the plant, going from water in the soil, moving via osmosis to the root hair cell, through the adjacent root cortex cells, ultimately to move into the xylem within the stem. It works its way up to the mid of the leaf via transpiration, and then gets carried by the veins to the mesophyll cells. Okay, hope all that helps.